Thanks, you. Thanks for, for joining this session. Um, today we're going to be talking about eBPF uh, programs and the way to simplify it to monitor your system. And we're going to be talking about um, an open source project we have at Solitio called Bumblebee. Okay, just a way to simplify your, your eBPF. Um, so, just uh, a quick intro to the speaker today. My name is Adam Saya. I'm a, I'm a field engineer at Solitio. Um, basically, I've been dealing with uh, API gateways and service mesh for quite a while now. Um, but I'm, you know, we, we started looking into uh, kind of a deeper layer now, uh, even at Solitio, and we're operating at a way deeper layer. So instead of being at L7, where it's mainly application, now we're looking to the L3, L4, dealing with, you know, uh, for example, now we try to, 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 to deal with eBPF, uh, seeing how we can leverage it to enhance monitoring, security, and so on. So it's pretty new to me. Uh, I'm, I'm still learning it. Um, and, and it's really interesting because that falls exactly where, um, where Bumblebee is. It's to simplify the way to provide the eBPF application to someone that is just getting up to speed in, in that technology. And with me, Jim uh, Barton, I think he just went to get his, uh, his laptop. He's a field engineer with me and the team. Uh, you know, we pair work, work together. All right. So again, thanks, thanks for joining. Okay, so quick intro to eBPF, what it is. BPF uh, stands for Extended Vectorly Packet Filter. Um, I think everyone using TCP dump, for example, have been using the, the, the BPF technology in the past. Uh, it's it even based basically as a way to, uh, to create some code that runs in the kernel in kind of a, in a sandboxed way, so secure manner. And, um, and we can interact with that code, right? We can interact either to, to get data or to provide features like security and so on, okay? Um, so the way we see it, again, so it's, uh, you're going to create a code that will run in the kernel. Uh, that code will, will be uh, tied to a hook, right? So an event, and then we're going to have a process that will interact with that code to read data and, and process it, okay? And we're going to see that more into details later in the workshop. All right, so why eBPF? Why would you care about this? Um, I was talking a little bit earlier what we do at Solo and I mentioned that you know we've been historically dealing with L7 uh, type uh, you know uh, systems where you have the gateway, a gateway can produce some monitoring stack uh, like metrics and so on uh, or security and so on but that's that's a way to high layer so if you want to secure your system you want to secure it in depth what I mean by that is what matters first, in terms of security, obviously, if you want to secure a network to not talk to another, I think the first one is basically having these two networks not being connected to each other. Okay, so that's physical. That's the most secure. Uh, from there, I think the, the layer after that, in, in terms of security, let's say they're connected now, is to deal with you know, lower levels in, in, in the model. For example, L, L3, L4, when you deal with TCP and network, you say, hey, Okay, so now we are segregating these two networks or these two services. They can't talk to each other. We're blocking the communication there. Because when it hits the L7 layer, so when it hits like the application level, uh, layer, it's uh, sometimes pretty late, right? So, uh, and, and can be, you know, uh, it's, more, it's more challenging to enforce uh, a strong security when it deals only with the top level uh, L7 policies, which is, for example, HTTP. Okay, so yeah. Why eBPF? It operates super low in, in the model. Uh, you can create code that goes directly in the kernel. So you have access to data fast, operate fast, enhance security. I think the, one of the main advantages of eBPF is observability. So you have a program running in your kernel, listening to events, for example, network connections or file opens or things that are really low level and acts on that, either operate there to enforce a policy or capture that metric and transform it, send it to a, send it to a, a program that can read it and for example, display metrics and so on, okay? So 
observability, I think that's one of the key features of, of eBPF and what we can do with it. Um, and I, I, I talked a bit about the other features, mainly networking, allowing you to kind of, uh, you know, use this technology to, to plug multiple system or reroute or deal anything what comes to, to traffic itself, right? And when I talk about that, I also can, I, men I can mention security as part of same bundle. Security, securing services to service communication and so on at, at a way lower level. For example, I'm not allowing this, this group of IPs to talk to this group of IPs, right? So it, it touched into networking plus security. Uh, and I think, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Cilium, for example, right? Cilium use eBPF for networking. So that's a good example of, you know, use cases where we can use uh, eBPF. All right. So the way, it, how, how it works. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a program that we call like a kernel program that runs within the kernel. It's, it's, co it's a code that would be... Uh, listening on certain events and reacting, producing, you know, producing data. When this data is produced, is it's put into a map, uh, into a map, and then you're gonna have uh, what we call a, a user uh, space program. That this one will look into that map, read data from it, and do something like either I don't know, print it, format it into metrics, do anything you want. But basically, it's two part system. You have one running in a kernel producing the, that's the most important one, producing what you want. And there's another one, which is the user space program. That's the one that actually listen to the data and, and do something with it. All right. So now, if I want to write an eBPF program, what can I do today? There's multiple ways. I think historically, the first one is BP, uh, BCC. Right, so BPF compile collection. This one will allow you to create some code. I think it's easier to see this way. Uh, it it allows you to create some code in, in C for uh, what a, a called kernel program. So the, the code that runs in the kernel is written in C. And then you're going to execute that code. You're going to embed it into you know, uh, a, a binder, uh, a, a binding technology. For example, we can use Python where Python, you're going to use your user program uh, to, to execute the user part of it. So in, in, the, same, in the same Python uh, script, or, uh, you see the example here, you're going to have the, the user program, so the one that actually, the user space program, the one that's going to read data, and you're going to also have C, like a, 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 kernel, a, a kernel code, C embedded into your Python, right? Um, this, this is fine, right? It allows you to write your, your BPF pro, eBPF programs, though it has some drawbacks. And I think the, the main one is that it is actually compile, compiled on the go. So every time you run that specific program, it's going to compile everything. So it takes some time there to run the system, to run the binary, right? So time plus it is uh, really dependent on the platform. So uh, let's say you have, um, you know, you, you run it on a certain system, you, you can't guarantee that this binary or this code will work somewhere else. It's going to really tie to, to your environment. So, yeah, not that great. Okay, so let's think about what's a better solution there. A better solution would be to run what we call the BPF, plus uh, BPF core E, okay? Core E stands for compile once, well, once, run everywhere, okay? So it's more, um, like if you look into, like a, just a, a bad comparison here, but you look at, at the Go code, for example, you'll probably compile it once, right? You're gonna create your program, compile it once in a specific environment, and it's gonna be, you know, just to be able to copy this somewhere else and it's gonna still work, okay? So it is, it is a, 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 a better way. It's better than the previous way, like the, with the BCC. Uh, LibBPF is, you know, allow us to create the code only once, to compile once, so we don't have to compile every time, and you can transport it from an environment to another. Though, 
what you have to do here, you still have to create your user space program plus the kernel one. So both of them, right? You still need to, to create both, both of them. And that will work with any, uh, you know, EBP, EBPF, you always need to, to create both. But this here um, is better than, than uh, BCC. And we're gonna see an example of all this, and we're gonna create multiple programs using the platform later on in the workshop. We're gonna compare different technologies and see how they works. All right, um, now, why Bumblebee? So we talked about BCC, we said it's all right. Now we talked about LibPF, we said, hey, it's better. Now let's make it great, okay? And to make it great, like what if I have, um, a library or a program or, or like, you know, like something that would help me to create BP, an eBPF program. I, I, I would care only about the kernel code, so I'm not gonna care about the user space code. I'm just gonna, you know, just write what matters. And what matters is basically the, the, the code running in a kernel. And what if uh, I want a tool that packages all that, so builds it and package it and put it somewhere where I can be able to reuse you know, have a good user experience where I can be able to re reuse my, my binaries, okay? And that's actually what Bumblebee is trying to solve here, okay? It's a tool that will allow us to care only about the kernel code, so I'm gonna create only the kernel code, plus I'm gonna be having a, a good user experience into building and uh, compiling, building, and dis distributing my, my, uh, my binary. And the, uh, if you guys use Docker, I'm pretty sure everyone uses Docker here, uh, it's kind of a similar, a similar experience, right? So you're gonna do, you know, create, create your, your, your code, then you're gonna build it, and then you're gonna package it into an OCI image, then you're gonna be able to push it somewhere to a registry, and then you're gonna be able to pull it when, when you need it on a specific environment, okay? So we're gonna do, we're gonna do this later. So again, um, that's just what I said right now, focusing on kernel code first, uh, not dealing much with, with the user space one, and also all uh, the, the user experience around it. So, okay, let's get hands on here. Let's, let's start on this. Um, I don't know if you guys were in the workshop yesterday, kind of same thing. Uh, we will um, just, everything you guys need today gonna be on a browser. So you need nothing else, you just need a, term, uh, a browser, you're gonna have to go on the specific link here and then uh, gain access to your environment and then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do the exact same instructions with you guys, okay? Uh, I'm gonna do it here on, if you don't have any laptops, you can follow with me here on, on, the, uh, on the screen. If you wanna do it, just you know, use your, your laptop right now and we're gonna do, same, do it in the same time. Uh, I just wanna mention that uh, at the end of this uh, uh, workshop, we have, uh, we're offering a certification, okay? So if there is a quiz at the end, and if you pass 80% uh, of the questions, you receive a badge that can be, uh, you know, you can link it to LinkedIn, or, uh, you know, it, it's basically a certification based on fundamentals to eBPF, since we're gonna, you know, be creating uh, some eBPF programs uh, today. Uh, and I'm gonna share the link to the, to the quiz at the end of the session, okay? So again, uh, please join this link here. Um, I'm gonna click on it to show you guys how it's gonna look like. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do it into, let's say I'm gonna do it in like a incognito one, just to make it easier. All right, um, there you go. So what you guys are gonna see is uh, you're gonna have to gain access to your, to your class and you're gonna see here uh, eBPF workshop loaded into my exclusives, right? And just click on the track and then um, click on start track, okay? So three steps there. First click on the link and then you're gonna add it, and then click on Start Track. Once you click here, it should, well, it, because it's incognito, it's gonna recapture me here, so doing the exercise. 
Very good. And we see that now the environment is creating, right? It's going to take a couple seconds to get um, probably a minute or two to get ready. And after that, I will, um, you know, uh, I, will do, I will do the examples in front of you. So going back to my slides, just to go back and show you basically the certification. So yeah, first thing, click on the link. You're going to have access to, your, uh, to the workshop. Just add it and then click on start track. Then you're going to be ready to follow, follow with us. Uh, and then once it's ready, you're going to see like a green button in a corner saying that your environment is ready to start. And then we're going to click on it and we're going to you know, start our workshop. Uh, so again, the, the badge uh, is going to be a fundamentals for eBPF. The um, only thing needed is to pass with 80%. Uh, if you, you can always retake the, the, the test if you miss the first time. The only thing you have to create it will use a different email uh, to, to, to re re retry the quiz. And uh, the badge will be issued in a couple of weeks, okay? So we're going to send that badge to a specific email in, in a couple, couple of weeks. All righty. So there you go. I think we start here. We're we good. We're good to start. Introduction to eBPF. So in this workshop, we're going to do three things. Uh, we're going to start by uh, creating a, a, a BPF program using uh, BCC, right? And then we're going to create uh, a, a same program using libbpf. And at the end, we're going to use the same thing for creating the same program, but using Bumblebee, okay? So first step, let's see how to create a BPF program using BCC. So to do this, we're going to go straight to the code. And as I mentioned earlier, when you create a BCC program, uh, program uh, you're going to you know, create your kernel code, plus you're going to create a user space, uh, user space program. If you guys have it, yeah. Are you all good? Sorry. Oh, OK. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't notice that. Sorry about that. All good? <laughs> let's, uh, let's go back to it. Maybe there's someone on the chat that uh, missed it. Yeah. So where, where was the? Oh, man. <laughs> I needed a coffee when I created this link. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Uh, it's eBPF, but yeah, it's, it, just click on that link, I guess. <laughs> Here with a typo. Um, yeah, sorry about that. That's what we do when we multitask, right? Um, okay, going back to... So, yeah, can, can you check if in the chat? I don't know if you have access. Uh, I, I can do it. Yeah, just check if, if anyone uh, needs help there. All right. Uh, well, you guys good now? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, so, again, let's... Try to create uh, uh, an eBPF program using VCC this time. So, as I mentioned, to create one using VCC, you're going to create everything in Python. Like you're going to write in Python, you're going to have the C++, uh, the C, uh, the C code for the kernel. Sorry, I just write it directly. But uh, you're going to, yeah, you're going to write the the C the C code uh, in Python. And you're going to have also the user program written in Python, right? So, we're going to sh show you guys this in a second. So let's see. Start by that. So let's start here and take a look at an eBPF program in uh, using VCC. So what we do here is going to see that we have some C code, which is starting from here all the way. I don't know if it's too small. Yeah, but starting from around here all the way down to, I don't know what's going on with my UI now. I'm gonna just refresh. Yeah, so let's go back. 
you're going to see that you have uh, some C++ code, uh, sorry, sorry, some C code all the way down here. That's basically for our kernel code. That's the one, the program we write right now, just going to grab any IP communication and print it. Okay, so it's going to be attached to um, basically a TCP, a TCP for connect, right? And it's gonna, it's gonna print anything. Like if, if there is any IP interaction, let's say you call out somewhere or there is a service calling something, we're gonna print it, okay? That's the program we write right now. So to do this, we're gonna have to do two things. Mainly the first part would be creating what we call the kernel code, the kernel program, and that's in C, and that is tied to the, the, the TCP connection event. And then it's gonna put that address, it's gonna put that IP into a map, as I mentioned. Okay, <laughs> uh, I was like, maybe is the question here. Um, and then once, so once the, the kernel code will grab that IP, when it detect there is a, connect, a connection there, you're gonna put it in the map, and then you're gonna have uh, the user program, that's, that one is in, Py, in Python, gonna read that map and print it. And that basically what's happening here on the second part of the, the Python code here. We'll see that we are just looping on all everything in that map, and then we're gonna print it, okay? So again, kernel code, will get the data, is listening to the event, uh, grabbing the data, any connection, grabbing the IP, putting it in the map. The user program is connecting that specific map and fetching data there and just printing it, okay? That's basically how eBPF programs are. Now, let's try to do the same thing. So, okay, again, let's go back here and let's just run it. So. Again, if you, if you run this Python 3 data, if you, if you run the same, you know, the same Python code we're just looking at here, we see that we are capturing all the IP communication here, okay? So source address to destination address, what's happening in your, in your system right now, okay? And you see this is really powerful. So now we can definitely monitor what's going on, all the interaction, IP interaction they have within your same system. Now, Let's try to do the same thing, but this time, we're gonna try to do it using um, libbpf. All right, to do this, let's go to a specific folder, and then we're just gonna copy all the code that we need. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the main difference between uh, BCC and libbpf. In the BPC, in, in a BCC, what we did, we had Python that, you know, take, taking care of our user program code, and uh, we just embedded the C code for the kernel within the same Python script. In libbpf, everything is in C, both a user program and your kernel code. Okay? So, we're going to see how this one works. Now we copied everything, our example here. Let's just do a make and test it out first. So we're gonna make our binary. I think also something I mentioned with libpf, the binary you're gonna create, this one can be reused on other platform, okay? It's not only tied to a specific environment compared to the first code we did. Now that we have our binary, let's just run it. Okay, and we see basically it's kind of the same thing. We are capturing the traffic, we're capturing the source destination and uh, you know, the, the target destination and printing both IPs here, okay? It's kind of the exact same functionalities. If we take a look at how this one is implemented, you're just gonna see that, uh, let's look at the source code um, I think we should focus on mainly, we should focus on mainly the, what we need here is defining, sorry, I just messed up here. Let's talk about this here, right? So, in your code, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you always use a map to communicate between your kernel program and your user space uh, program. 
And through that, you, you're going to use a map. Uh, and there is basically two, two, two main ways of doing it. Either you can use a hash map, which is basically you know, a key value store, uh, or you can uh, use um, a ring buffer, right? So basically, it's just like a queue. So you're putting data in a certain queue, and then we are, you know, you are, we are fetching it on the other side. That, that basically, like what we're using right now, right? Uh, no, so we're using, uh, sorry, we're using a hash map here. But basically, you define, you're gonna define the structure of the data you're gonna, you know, you're gonna send to your user program. All right, so once this one is defined, then we're gonna look into what are we doing, and the other part important here is that we are tying our kernel code to a kprop tcp v4 connect. So again, as I mentioned earlier, when you create your kernel, kernel code in, um, in, um, in EBPF, in the kernel, you tie it to a specific event, right? So this code is watching for something and react, reacting to it. In our use case here, we are listening to a TCP v4 connect, okay? So we are uh, checking any communication going on and then processing this data and putting it in the map, kind of the exact same situation we have previously. Only difference here, that both codes are in uh, C. Okay, so now, you know, we, we saw the, the kernel code at this stage, we saw how we define the structure of the data we need. Like we see here that we need, you know, a map. Uh, and, and the data actually, I didn't mention that, but the data you see that we are sending here, what we're looking for, we're looking for, you know, we're capturing this, this two, the two field here, basically that's what we are sending through our map. We are sending the address, the, what, the, the source address and the destination address, kind of, you know, like if you're looking at, like if you're writing any code, you know, like you're familiar with like, definition of structures, you're gonna define like what kind of object you wanna transport from a, like, you know, through a map or through a, uh, like, a, you know, a channel if you, you're doing Go or something. So basically here we're defining that we are, you know, we need, we need to capture, or populate the source address and the destination address. We're gonna, you know, define all this dimension and use it through, put it through the, through the, through the map. All right, so that was the kernel code now let's take a look at the user uh, space application, right? So as I mentioned earlier, uh, once the data is processed on the kernel, now we need to connect to it and read it and do something with it, okay? And in this case, it's basically just going through the list, right? It's just going through the list and printing whatever it gets, right? Um, we are going to connect to that map, capture the data, and just print it. There's nothing, there's nothing magic here. Now, uh, the thing is, so the thing is that, that you need to, to, to be aware of here, um, there is no mainly difference, like, in, it, like at the end, the two, the, the BCC program and the libpf program are behaving exactly the same, though, this time we create something more efficient. So we just, you know, we, we uh, built it once. Okay, we had to create our user, we, ha we had to create our user space program. But basically we just built it once and now we can reuse the same binary on a different environment, right? You can even like copy it to somewhere else and run the same thing, it's gonna always work. I mean, as long as you're running on kind of a new, a new kernel. All right, so, I hope you guys see at least the difference between BCC and libbpf. Now, let's simplify this even a bit further. So let's, let's try to make a simplified application. To do this, we're gonna use Bumblebee, okay? First, uh, just a question here. Are you guys on the same, um, on the same lab? Are you guys right here, are you good? All right, awesome, okay. Okay, so we, we, we saw how to do an EBPF program. So at this stage, you guys can create EBPF programs, right? 
right? All right. Proud of you guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So let's say now I've kind of you know that's that's what I was like mentioning when I when I started talk. I think the 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 beauty of Bumblebee, and you're gonna see it now. It's still, I mean, it's still like it's gonna still be C C code and all that stuff, but it's kind of simplifying the way we create uh, eBPF programs. I think that's the main goal of it. We're trying to simplify things uh, through technology. If if you if we have to still deal with like low level libraries, it's gonna be complicated. Though here we still have to deal partially with some low level libraries, but there's lots of other toolings that can simplif simplify our life. And that's the goal of Bumblebee. We see the complexity, let's try to reduce it. I'm not gonna solve it completely, but let's try to make it better. Okay, so let's install Bumblebee here. Okay, now we have Bumblebee, Bumblebee installed. So you should, if you run just B, sorry, too many E's. You should see it installed. So let's go and do B init. So B init will just create kind of a, a, a placeholder type project within in your system and allow you to create your first eBPF program. So you do B init and then okay, so which kind of language we wanna we, we wanna use today? Uh, today we're just you know. Uh, we can only use C, but in the future we are looking into using Rust too. So, okay, I want a, a C-based uh, EPPF program. Now, let's take a look on what we want to do. Are we looking into doing network stuff? Are we looking into like uh, capturing data in from the network, or are we are looking more into kind of file system things? Right? Are we looking into capturing who is opening certain files or so on. Okay, at this time, in this example, let's do a network one. Now, uh, in terms of what we wanna do, um, in, you know, I mentioned the map, right? I mentioned the map that contains the data sent from the kernel code to the user space program. What kind of type, what type of map you want? At this stage, let's say I want a hash map, okay? So I don't want just a queue, I want a key value store. And now the last one is basically uh, how, so the data I'm gonna get from my kernel, um, the data I'm gonna get from my kernel program, what I wanna do with it? Am I gonna want it as a metric, like a counter, or want it as a judge? I, I want it to just maybe to print it, and this is what we're gonna do right now. We're just gonna print the data coming from the kernel, um, uh, kernel program, okay? And then let's say we just want this into a file called probe.c. All right, now we're good. All righty, so let's take a look at probe.c. Probe.c. And we can see that now, at this stage, it's kind of just a placeholder of like what kind of data you're looking for, okay? In this case, uh, I mean, you saw earlier, we defined our structure of the data we, we're looking for, and here we didn't define anything, right? The dimension is, is empty, so we didn't find any data we wanna look, you know, we're not process, but we're gonna do it later. Uh, and then we're gonna define basically the configuration of the map that, that we need for transporting data from, from, uh, uh, from the kernel all the way to the user program. And in this stage, we are actually connecting basically just a kind of a, a Halloware example, but in this case, we are connecting to TCP v4 connect, okay? So because we said it's a network ABPF program we're creating right now, we are uh, you know, watching the event for any TCP v4 connects, right? Um, now let's let's do something. Let's do a difference between a diff between the you know the previous. Like we do it. Let's go do a diff between how we do create a user kernel program in just libpf, comparing that with how we do it in in, uh, in Bumblebee. If we run it here, 
we're going to see that the only difference, so it's basically Bumblebee behind the scene to use, to, to create like um, counter programs, it's still using libbpf, okay? So the only difference here is that we added like a way to say how we want to process this specific data, okay? And we see here like, like in, in, the, in the old, basically on the libbpf one we did previously, we just used a map. This time we're saying, okay, we want a map, but basically we want also a counter based on that, okay? And we'll see how useful is this in, in the future. All right, so now let's just get the code of the libbpf we did previously, which is gonna grab the same one this time, just the, uh, the kernel program one, okay? We're not gonna get the, the user program one. We're just gonna do the kernel program, copy it, and just modify the specific line that calls only that put data in map. We're gonna put maps dot uh, counter. All right, so let's copy this. Now we have it. All right. So, okay, so at this stage, we have uh, a libbpf type program, so we have, we have a Bumblebee program only for the kernel uh, program, right? We didn't write the user, the user space one that actually reads the data. And the only thing we modified here is that on the map, we did map.counter, so we are gonna count the data. Now, we describe that as metric, you know, a counter metric. Now, um, why Bumblebee is important here? How is it gonna make our life easier? At this stage, we will see no difference, right? We just saw, we still wrote, you know, we still have, have to write a libbpf lib lib program on the kernel. Well, the good news is you don't need to create um, the user space program. You don't have to write that anymore. So this is gonna be taken care of by Bumblebee. Right, so if you go back to the previous, I don't know if you can go back to the previous example, but if you guys remember the second example, we had to create two C uh, files. And this time we have to create only one, which is just the kernel one, only the one that matters, okay? All right, so let's do, uh, and now let's show you also how we can simplify all the process using B. When I say B is like Bumblebee, actually, right? So let's do a B build here. And you guys see that I'm compiling my BPF program. So it's going to compile the, uh, the example I have here for TCP Connect. It's taking some time. And then, all right. Now it's compiled, okay? Now I have my BPF program ready. I didn't have to create a user space program. Okay, so that's a win, right? Uh, now, okay, so I have it compiled. I have it in OCI image. I mentioned earlier, it's kind of the same Docker, kind of a Docker experience. Now that I have my program, I can push it somewhere, right? I can. Uh, push it in any OCI compliant registry, anything that can store, for example, a Docker, a Docker image. So here, locally, you can start like a, a Docker image registry in your environment, and then we're gonna be able to push that program. Okay, so now, think about it. You have your BPF program created, and you have it now in a registry that you can reuse, okay? All right, so now we have uh, the program there. So let's, uh, let's now just run it. Okay, we're just gonna do brun and point to that specific, uh, you know, build and look at that. Okay, basically we didn't have to do much. We had to create obviously the kernel code one, uh, but you see that we have a counter automatically uh, included, and when you see the values here, how many communication we have between that specific address to that specific address. And we can, if you, even if you go on the second terminal, you can try that, 
go on like terminal two and do like uh, let's say we do curl, sorry, curl, google.com, I run that, go back to your terminal, you see you have new addresses, okay? These ones are coming from any traffic operating on your system. Okay, so think about the power here, what you can do. Um, now we create a, a, a BPF program that we push to a registry that we can deploy anywhere we want. It's actually printing really valuable data. Okay? All right, everybody. Uh, so let's take a look at what we can do with uh, what other data we can use. Since uh, B is running right now, like Bumblebee is running, it's actually also providing metrics, okay? So we said that this is one of the most important things, providing metrics easily. So if we do a curl slash metrics, pointing like on the port 1991, since our Bumblebee service is running, let's go to another terminal and just run this command here. You guys are gonna be able to see that we are getting a lot of metrics that we can be able to use. And we're gonna see that later, but you see the first one here on top? Right, I don't know if you guys see it or I can just probably zoom in. But basically we got the data, we are getting the data from source and destination, like the data that we really need uh, as, as a Prometheus metric, right? And, and this, this kind of component we already wrote, we can reuse, and I mean, in, within the same uh, you know, enterprise or company, people can reuse like ABPF programs without having to, to write them. They may be able to run it somewhere that's gonna collect data from a specific, like, let, like let's take a, at an example here. Let's say I'm part of a company and uh, I'm maybe an SRE or maybe just a security guy. But the thing is, they asking me to provide a way to monitor every single cluster Kubernetes cluster to get all the data from the traffic going from a service to another. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, let's say I have like 50 clusters. The only thing I can, like, it's, it's pretty straightforward what I can do here. I can build my BPF program, compile it, build it, push it into a registry, and then just deploy it on every single cluster. I can just have like, a, for example, Argo CD or something like that, that deploys this BPF program Everywhere, it's gonna collect data from everywhere, and then we're gonna be able to see a full graph or communication between all my services, okay? So let's put, um, actually, we've been seeing a lot of code now, but let's see a use case. Let's see how we can use eBPF in one cool example. All right, so in the next lab, we're gonna put all this together and try to see the power of actually the eBPF program with Bumblebee. Are you guys excited? <laughs> Are you guys ready? Sure. All right. So, are you guys done at least? Are you, are you guys at this stage here or am I going too fast? Good, good, awesome, awesome, yeah, cool. All right, so, too much code, let's see the fun stuff. All right, we already wrote our BPF program. We already pushed it to a registry, it's already ready. You don't have to do anything. You're done with that part. Let's put it in a real use case here. So let's say I have uh, a demo application, right? Let's say, in this case, we're gonna use the book info demo application. Let's say I wanna use that one. Uh, I'm gonna deploy it on my current test cluster. There you go. This will create my demo application with a couple services. If you do kubectl get pod, you're gonna see some containers getting created. Okay, so the book info application is just a, it contains like four services, it has new UI, and you can see like, you know, you can have I think it has like a, a product page and reviews and details, ratings. Does anyone here use Istio? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it's, it's basically the, dem, the demo example that Istio use always, okay? All right. 
So I have a demo application running. Think about that as your application, right? Like whatever you're using internally. It's on Kubernetes today. Now let's now let's uh, let's actually deploy Prometheus to you know collect all this data and put it put it in in Prometheus. Oh, sorry, I need to click on the right things. All right, let's create a namespace for Prometheus, and then let's just install Prometheus. Do you guys use Prometheus here? All right, go. Cool. All right, so the goal here is to collect metrics and put them, like all this data, all the, uh, the connectivity data we, we saw you, like in the previous lab, we're gonna put that into Prometheus and then leverage this data. All right, now Prometheus is installed. That's cool. Now let's, install, actually deploy Bumblebee. So again, previously we mentioned that we can package the ABPF programs into an OCI image that can be in the registry. So now what we're gonna do is that we deploy this ABPF program on our cluster. And to do that, we're gonna use a daemon set. Okay, and we're gonna make sure that we have at least one pod running on every single node in our Kubernetes cluster to collect this specific data. So just a daemon set here, nothing crazy. And you can see here the only difference here. So we have Bumblebee running the, you know, the, the just a, the Bumblebee Docker image. We have a package here. But the thing here, what matters is that we are pulling data from this uh, OCI image that we pushed in the previous lab. You guys did B push to a registry, right? So that's the only thing we are doing. So we are running a Bumblebee container, but uh, we are running actually this, the, the BPF program within the same, with the same, same pod. And then we're exposing everything through a port 1991. All right, now once I deploy this, this is done. So this will create uh, a pod on every single uh, node, and that pod will have the, our program that we created previously running, okay? And the metrics we saw gonna be exposed on a specific port. Now, the only thing we have to do is to configure, um, you know, uh, Prom Prometheus uh, pod monitor, in this case, to look into the this pods and you know collect data from it collect all the metrics to and send them to prometheus and we see that here okay all right good uh all right so at this okay so at this stage here we have our demo application installed we have our abpf program running on every single node and we have prometheus configured to listen to metrics on that specific parts. Now, the only thing we're gonna do is to run some traffic. All right, so here, just generating traffic. Imagine that's a customer playing with your environment or anything you want. So we are running traffic through multiple microservices, right? So going from a pod to another, and we just, you know, just need some data here. Now, so at this stage, we have all our data in Prometheus. So the only thing I'm gonna do right now, actually, one of my colleagues created this small program called Key BPF. Key BPF. It's just gonna look into Prometheus, like for the data, and then gonna format it in like a you know in a graph. So that's the only thing that's happening right now. We're looking into Prometheus, and then we're gonna collect all this data show that as a graph. All right. There you go. We're gonna just create this system. And here we are just deploying this pod key BPF. And it's looking into Prometheus, right? We're looking, we're pointing to Prometheus itself directly and that's all we need to do. This is running, this is cool. So let's see what's happened here. 
I don't know if you guys can see, but this is what we just created. Okay? So we have, we have a, a, a Kubernetes cluster of multiple nodes. We have Bumblebee installed on every single node. That's the one collecting the data. And then we have our product page and details and reviews and ratings installed in our cluster. I don't know which nodes. Basically, it's just installed there. And then we're running some traffic here to see what's going on. Okay, and all this data from Bumblebee is pushed into Prometheus. And then we have this KEBPF, it's just a server to process um, Prometheus data and show them in a certain way. So if we go to KEBPF, there you go. Look at this magic. Really cool. All right, so you guys saw what happened here? So like that lib that the program we created earlier in, uh, in the previous lab, it's producing data here. It's producing really valuable data. We can see what's going on. We can see which service is calling which service. You see here, we can, we can know that the traffic is originating from the product page, going to the reviews, going to details. All this data got captured by the BPF program we just created, okay? We deployed in our clusters and then how we collect them and how we process them to show some valuable data. I don't know if you guys are uh, gonna be using, with, like for example, Cilium. Cilium do something kind of similar with a project called Humble that will collect data and produce some sort of graph or some sort of charts, okay? So this is just a quick example of what you can do with eBPF. It's really powerful to grab data directly from your, from your nodes. You can process them, you can display them this way can create policies to you know, uh, secure the traffic and so on. So I hope you guys uh, saw the power here. That's uh, that basically the end of this, uh, of this workshop. I hope you guys saw, saw that what we can do with APPF. It's a really powerful tool. Um, I invite you guys to, to test Bumblebee locally. See, maybe, that's, maybe you guys are gonna find a use case for it. We're gonna go back to the I'm gonna go back to this. First thing I wanna mention basically what, you know, if you guys are interested in all these technologies, right, like EPPF, uh, Cilium, are like you interested into Istio, uh, Envoy, we are hiring, we're growing the company fast. You take a look there, uh, we're always, you know, uh, we're always uh, looking for talented people. Um, second thing, we are, we have a booth here, uh, S25. You know, if you guys have any questions right now or after this uh, talk, if you want to just continue the conversation, please visit, visit us there. It's going to be always good to see you there. And uh, lastly, I want to just mention our badge for today. So if you if you go to oh this time I I spell it right I guess <laughs> yeah. So if you go to uh, ebpf exam. Uh, or just scan the QR code, really small, but I don't know if you can do it. Uh, that will take you to a quiz, and it's probably, like, I think there's like a 15 question or something. And if you answer them all correctly, or more than 80%, we're gonna provide you a fundamental for BPF badge. If you just wanna redo that specific exam, just use a different email, and that totally be fine. All right, and about that, well, thank you guys for listening to me. Uh, that was, hopefully that was uh, some valuable information here. And the best thing we did in only in one hour. <laughs> At 5 p.m. in the afternoon, I guess you guys were done. <laughs> if you guys didn't have any questions, uh, I'll be here around. Yeah, so let's go back to that to show you here. Uh, let's go back to it. So if you go back here, all right, so remember like Bumblebee was providing metrics directly on the server. Once it runs, it provides metrics on the port. I remember it was 1991 when we can't figure it, right? Uh, Prometheus have a way to act, to collect data, and that's through what they call a pod monitor, I think. Where is it? 
need to look for it. Yeah, there you go. So basically, this CR here, right, will tell will tell um, uh, Prometheus to go and look for data from slash metrics on a specific port that we call, like for example, this time we we putting the port HTTP monitoring. Okay, this CR here will configure Prometheus to aggregate data from from any from any um, any service any pod basically labeled Bumblebee and that has a slash metrics on a port HTTP monitoring. We don't have to put specifically 1991, just we need to label the port itself. And that's gonna take care of the data collection. All right, any other questions? We have some from online. Online, okay. Don't mind me, sorry if I mispronounce anything. Yeah, go ahead. So Adam, you mentioned that the eBPF program you prepared would work on any other machine. Is it due, so would work. So yeah, is it due to BTF? What code changes, if any, need to be made for an eBPF program to be portable? Oh, okay, good. Um, all right, so mainly the portability part of it is based on two things. Um, like if we look just between uh, BCC, right, and LibBP, uh, LibBPF, which let's take the comparison here because that's the main one that is allowing us to do portability. Uh, if, if we go back to, I'm not sure I have any program here running. Uh, well, let's see if I can do that. Just give me a second. I'm going to go back to the example, uh, EPPF introduction. I'm going to show you something here. So once, once you, if you create any BCC program, you're dealing directly with, with binding methods that talk directly to the kernel, okay? Um, where if you do libbpf, you have to use specific libraries, right, that kind of creating an abstraction there to allow the portability, okay? I'm gonna just try to find you an example here. It's gonna be easier to understand. Uh, well, this is, this is still the first example of BPC. But yeah, let's, let's for, first start with BCC here. Um, when you, yeah, when you do, like, when you deal with, like, BCC code, you're gonna write directly, you know, you're gonna trigger BCC binding function directly. Though, in libbpf, and let me find you this right now. Uh, okay. So let me just find you this. If, well, maybe I can just do it here. Uh, okay. Um, Okay, maybe not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe here. All right, there you go. Am I in the wrong spot? Oh, maybe I'm in the wrong spot. Okay, let's do this now. Okay, so every time you're dealing with, uh, every time you're dealing with, like you're trying to do portability, the way you do it in libbpf is to call this binding command, for example, this bpf core read into. This one will guarantee the portability across multiple kernels because it is actually a binding on top. It is the one dealing with this, uh, you know, uh, building a binary for multiple uh, multiple kernels. It has this awareness because we're using an abstraction that's a framework on top of just direct code like in, in BCC, okay? So that's the first part of the portability. The second part of the portability is once you create that, like once you create a libbpf program, it is running on Docker image, right? It's running on Docker image and so the portability is going to be there because even if you have another environment, it's still a Docker image running, okay? So that's, that's how portability is, is, uh, is assured. Hope I answered the question. 
why sorry, it's on. Yep. Why do I get assertion error expected zero to be at least one? Okay. Douche. You got the same thing? Oh, ah, okay. It, it, yeah, you just do a, I think it's a, when you miss, you do a, a B push. There's like this command, Bumblebee push, basically. If, if you miss that specific command, I think I had the same uh, previously. It's going to say, you know, you have to be at least, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Uh, really, really, uh, you know, thank you for, for, for joining the session and uh, hope to see you soon. Hope to see you on that. We offer a lot of, you know, this kind of same, uh, some same um, workshops. We, we provide them online. So if you join Solo.io, you're going to see uh, we do that for Istio, we do that for like Istio, we have three, we have one which is fundamentals, one is like more advanced and one is expert, right? We do that for Envoy, we do that for um, like now for ABPF. So there's multiple certification you can have. Uh, so yeah, invite you to see you, to see you there. All right, thank you guys. <laughs>